The Astura city finally has its highway ring, with brand new interchanges to bring in people and cargo. Those interchanges I built last time had some unused roads that I mentioned will connect into some new industry. But it will not be just an ordinary industry that you could have seen probably a billion times before in city skylines. No, 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 it will be much more complex than that. There is one huge piece of land still left on the side of the mainland part of the city, just between the new interchanges. So that's where we will build today. But that's actually not the only place where the industry and technical places are in the city. This place will only be the entrance to it, since Asturis will get a huge level underground, below the whole city. So today we are going to build a sunken industrial and technical area in an open pit with clear indications that the whole thing just continues well past this zone. It sounds probably a little too unclear, so let's go build it and you will see. We are going to start with some outside blocks, outside of the open pit, because uh, the initial idea was that this pit is going to, this industrial area, is going to like very sharply transition between the industry and the rest of the city, because it's literally going to be, I mean, the initial name for this place would be the scar. I first wanted to build like a, seriously, like a scar, like a straight pit, like an open space for the industry that would just, uh, just carve the city in half or something like that. I was kind of hinting this project uh, throughout the entire series, how I really just uh, wanted to build those like technical places, technical like see-through areas, uh, like in the middle of blocks, building blocks, especially those super high density blocks where I would just put uh, the asphalt surface, uh, decals and make it just look dirty and put all kinds of pipes there and this kind of maintenance looking like technical places that are necessary to keep the city running, right? But it was always obvious that the city is just way too big for only these little places to provide all the energy and infrastructure like water, electricity, these kinds of things to it, right? So there must be some something more to it. Just like in real life cities, you have all kinds of little tunnels for pipes and, you know, not just buried cables underground, just covered in soil completely, but also these little like uh, collectors, I guess they are called maybe. So, you know, I'm kind of do going to do something similar, but just much bigger, like a lot bigger, okay? So it's gonna be like huge new level, uh, of, uh, of just technical stuff below the city. It's gonna be underground, no one's gonna see that, of course. I'm not gonna actually physically build it, but, um, well, Asturias was always about just applying the imagination a little. So there is some kind of lore to these things, but we have to imagine them a little. I guess the same applies to the space elevator and, well, this industry. All right, so this is it. I was done with uh, just wrapping up this, this block of buildings, really nothing fancy. I only wanted to put some offices mostly in here because, well, it's gonna be right on the side of this, uh, of the scar. So uh, probably not a good idea to build some high density residential towers, just looking directly into it. Offices will do. Right, so I'm just going to flatten this terrain to some kind of a height that I felt uh, would be nice. Then I was just building this concrete wall as kind of like the top beam that's just gonna be uh, forming the roof of the entire industrial level down below. I should probably not call it industrial level because it's not exactly gonna be like fully or even like uh, somewhat a manufacturing place. It's mostly gonna be really for just keeping the city running, for providing it with energy, water, and I guess garbage collection maybe, and all kinds of different things that you can imagine a future city might need. It might obviously need a whole bunch of uh, resupplies, so I'm including also these tracks, maybe some of these bigger uh, like shopping malls or buildings might actually receive its cargo through here. So it might also be some goods that will be transported uh, on the railways into this place. Or it might just be some kind of, uh, you know, equipment, maintenance uh, equipment and hardware and those kinds of things. 
Right, so I just took a couple of tracks in here, forming some kind of a little train yard, you know, warehouse area. So I'm just uh, building them here and there. I also used already or placed those concrete pillars that are just going to be visible from the outside. The place on the left is obviously going to be covered with, uh, with some kind of grass. And I'm just going to put some trees over it to like clearly divide it, yeah? But it's not gonna be like a huge park area. It's gonna be just a little strip of trees to just immediately uh, like show you that there is something different happening. It was kind of a good uh, good decision. I did not exactly plan to, to do it like that, but it was definitely worth it because at first I was thinking that the scar, as the name suggests, kind of, is gonna be like even uh, visually completely different compared to the rest of the city. So it's gonna be much darker, right? If I'm gonna zoom out to the entire map, you are immediately going to spot that, yep, there's just something going on there. Unfortunately, it did not turn that way. The entire scar place, even though I tried making it darker, I did not really make it like super dark compared to the rest of the city. So it was actually a really good decision to include these kinds of green stripes on the sides of it so that it's gonna be like highlighted, accented maybe a little. Well, anyway, this is, uh, I, I'm just uh, I'm just exactly in my element, by the way, when, when building this, because it's that kind of like technical stuff and it's kind of easy to do that in city skylines, but at the same time, it's super rewarding because you can just slap down all of these technical looking buildings there are not really that many in the workshop, but there are definitely enough. And for like technical stuff, industrial stuff, it doesn't matter that it's gonna be repetitive somewhat because, well, that's how it is, you know? No one really wants to create like a dome of this uh, reactor shape, I guess, uh, different every time because why? There's absolutely no reason to do some kind of architectural, you know, uh, gymnastics in here. So it's absolutely fine that these things will be repetitive. It's adding visually to this uh, very technical look and very, I don't know, menacing look maybe even, especially with these like chimneys and antennas and these kinds of uh, little things, right? So that's exactly what I really wanted to build in Asturias for a very very long time and finally uh, I kind of got the opportunity with the expansion of the rest of the city I got the opportunity to finally do the proper scale of such place so yeah there it is so I'm just going to be using even these kinds of uh, tanks because they might be like storage for some vital resource that the city needs I'm not like, necessarily thinking that those dome buildings are like fusion reactors or some kind of uh, power generating buildings but you know, maybe they are. Sure, it's right below the city. You know, if something goes wrong, then you probably won't won't be, uh, would not like to be right on top of it. But uh, well, if it's a fusion reactor, then uh, you know, if something goes wrong, then it probably doesn't matter where on the planet it is. So uh, might as might as well just make it convenient for the workers to arrive into it. Now, speaking of workers arriving into it, I'm going to put the tram line over here. So these are the tram tracks that I kind of already prepared in the last episode, made it go underground, especially in this area. At first, uh, when, when City Skylands 2 was released and kind of announced, I was actually thinking I'm not even going to finish this uh, tram track over here. I might just put it through some uh, forested area or something like that, just to complete the scenery for like a potential first person ride, but uh, nah, it was absolutely clear that I need to make it go through some kind of industry, some, some, well, the scar, some industry like that. So there it is. So it's going to go into the sunken place. It's just going to run through it and uh, just, you know, exit on the other side. It's not exactly super necessary tram line in the entire city, to be completely honest, but uh, hey, do I really need reasons to build trams, right? Now, also in this place, I'm going to build, or well, I'm not going to build it, I'm going to hint it, I'm going to hint a tram depot. So I'm going to just make, uh, well, I'm going to make like warehouses on top, uh, but uh, the tracks are just going to enter the warehouses uh, from below, from uh, this, uh, this scar sunken area. Uh, you know, so it's just a little different. Uh, I already built like a sunken tram and bus depot in Aurelia back in the day. I don't really want to build anything uh, similar to that because, well, it was it was already done before. 
So yeah, th this was just a very, very satisfying build together. Like I already said, I just, uh, I just put together like a palette of possible buildings that I could use here. I was heavily using these uh, Dowell nuclear power plant buildings that I downloaded for Altengrad initially, but uh, yeah, it's, it's super fitting into Asturias as well. You cannot really go wrong with these kinds of industrial, technical looking buildings if you are trying to build well, industry or technical looking places. So vast majority of these buildings that you download from the workshop just fit because you are not really trying to go after some like uh, super nice look. You already, you, you just need some kind of warehouses, some corrugated roofs and just you know, really boxes. Yeah, boxes and tanks. So these kinds of shapes and it's just gonna be really rewarding when you put it together. It's just good to have that quantity and the dirty technical look. So that's exactly what I'm going for right here. I'm using the vanilla industrial roads uh, throughout the entire place because there's just some detail on them that's just going to contribute to that uh, dirty, somewhat complicated look. I'm uh, heavily recoloring them. I think I'm actually recoloring them to like pitch black. They are not gonna be all the way black, but uh, they are just going to have this very dark uh, texture below that wear, which is much brighter. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to turn the intersections completely black, but I'm just going to later fix that with intersection marking tools and add some more uh, like uh, patterns on it, like cracked patterns, because you can do that with intersection marking tools, so that's very handy. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to build over here. So these kinds of like sunken, sunken places, so like sub-levels, even below the main level, where I'm just going to put pipes and all these kinds of technical looking props. I don't really care about the actual purpose of some of these props. I just want to clutter the area. I just want to make it so, I just want to make it uh, look super busy and uh, that, that's, it, that's it, that's literally it, that's the goal. So a whole bunch of these pipes, I kind of do want to make it uh, like colorful, that's exactly why I'm using the asphalt uh, pitch black surface down below. I am uh, making it dirty with the decals, but it's still much darker, for example, compared to the concrete walls and these kinds of pillars. Uh, then I'm using some of these colored pipes, the, the rusted uh, pipes, the big ones, those are just looking nice on their own. And yeah, as you can see, I'm just adding, for example, those cranes made by Revo for the, uh, for the rail yard buildings. So, you know, all kinds of details go in here. Here and there, I'm also going to be using those uh, like prop doors in here. It's kind of indicating that the road is just continuing into that concrete wall. And I obviously need to use the doors that have uh, the black and yellow uh, highlights on them, the, the stripe uh, safety pattern. So, you know, that's, that's just screaming industry. And once again, it's just some kind of highlight that you are immediately going to notice because it has a completely different color pattern compared to the rest of the area. Exactly the same reason for some of these details. So for example, these uh, bright red or orange pipes, some of these containers, and then a whole bunch of just stuff to place around. This place really needs to be super busy, super cluttered, unlike some different places around the city. So immediately, right from the start, I decided that I'm going to do this, this project differently. Usually I'm doing the rough cut with just the bigger buildings, bigger structures, bigger details. And then later I'm adding, uh, you know, the little stuff everywhere. In this project, I decided to do it uh, just one place at a time, just kind of work my way from one end to the opposite one of the place. So I'm already doing decals and these little like parked vehicles, containers, and those kinds of details, that are, like final details. One final detail that I will do uh, for the entire place when it's done is uh, our lights. Yeah, that's the night lights, and street lights, and these kinds of things, because that kind of needs to be done in one go so that I just, uh, you know, use the same style and uh, spacings between the lights and these kinds of things. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, last. By the way, that's also gonna be super important to make this place stand out during the night. When you zoom out during the day, you have to be able to see this place, but also during the night. So that's gonna be a very important task. 
Right, so uh, then I'm going to be heavily using these uh, these uh, trucks. I'm just going to be uh, building some kind of parking lots. In this particular case, again, I'm just indicating movement for these kinds of trucks, indicating that they are going inside of the area. There are going to be these futuristic cargo trains parked here and there. And in this case, uh, they're going to look like uh, they are being unloaded for some kind of cargo. A couple of containers. I'm specifically using these uh, purple ones because once again, they are just going to add some clearly visible detail to the surface. It's not going to be all just gray and black, but it's going to have also these uh, nice colors all around. The way I'm building this place is actually really nice for the time lapse because I can just show you the process in more detail towards these uh, starting locations to the left of the scar area. And uh, then I'm just going to be mostly skipping the repetitive processes as I'm just continuing the build further and further. So uh, you could have seen it uh, how exactly I did this. So I started with the buildings, I just positioned the buildings, uh, then I just decided on the levels of them, did the roads around, uh, made the entire place into pavement, put some decals, little details, and the technical stuff all around. That's going to repeat uh, throughout this entire area, even though I am going to be heavily trying to just, uh, you know, reshuffle the geometry of, for example, the tanks. I'm going to change colors of the tanks, by the way, uh, because I can, you know. So one of those tanks there I made, uh, or I'm, I made them blue and red, some others I'm gonna make purple and orange actually. So yeah, this place is eventually going to be quite colorful and it, it's just going to fit the overall style of the city, really. This thing, what I'm building right here, that's actually a continuation of something that I did throughout the city a couple of times. I, I really like doing this kind of detail and I think I actually did it even back in the day in Aurelia City because Again, it's just one of those really rewarding little things to do. And this one is just screaming some like futuristic uh, industry, right? By the way, that's actually something that I wanted to talk about. I'm not really sure, well, everyone has seen Star Wars, of course, but uh, I think it does have a name, that kind of uh, design style where you, for example, have the, the Star Wars uh, Star Destroyer, right? And it's, uh, it's designed so that it's a, uh, it's like a very flat uh, surface on the main deck, I guess, the armor. And then you have that little area, the, the kind of like a sandwich area between the top and bottom, which is just super messy, right? It just has all the pipes and just little extrusions everywhere, windows and stuff. And that's kind of what I would like to go for in here, that kind of similar style. So. You have, uh, oh, I guess Death Star, I guess, was designed in a similar way, you know, the trench and everything. So I guess that I'm trying to go for like a similar thing where you have the main surface. Uh, you can think of the entire city as the main surface, but in this particular place, that's just the pavement surface. And below it, and uh, well, there's obviously a lot of happening below it, clearly. Uh, with like a like a spaceship, obviously, but in some strategic areas, you are just going to show it, right? So you're just going to cut the surface and you are going to have a clear vision of what's going on below. So of all these pipes, all the technical stuff, and it's going to be clearly visible from some distance. It's going to be heavily uh, 3D, right? I guess that's the point of these kinds of models, to not really make them flat, but uh, to just make them somewhat interesting. And it works. It works uh, very well. So yeah, that's, that's the kind of style that I'm going for over here. And that's what I already tried doing in some different parts of the city with these kinds of cuts into the technical side of the, of the undercity, I guess. Uh, I just decided that uh, these kinds of domes, uh, sunken dome area, is going to be filled with water, because why not? I can do that. And it's going to introduce another color in this place. I already recolored some of those tanks into blue, but like, why not have water, yeah, right? It might be cooling for those domes, but really, it's just the detail, it's just the decoration that I wanted to place here. This place was, of course, uh, kind of clunky with all kinds of shapes, especially the railways uh, dictated some sort of areas. So as you can see right here, I'm playing with node controller, heavily playing with the directions. 
so that I can stretch this parking lot road and uh, I don't need to go through the trouble of just creating this asphalt place, uh, you know, completely manually. I can just do it with a single network and just a quick uh, change with node controller. Exactly the same thing I'm going to do over here with this bigger parking lot. It needs to fit between the railways once again. So I'm just going to do it uh, like that. I'm going to block traffic on these like heavily changed streets because uh, it would just look silly, yeah, going into these completely mangled lanes. This particular dome of the of the uh, rail yards from the United States, I believe, I obviously have to use that, right? That's a very futuristic looking building. I'm going to use it actually super similarly to uh, how I used it in Aurelia. I think I also sank it down below the surface level and uh, only showed the top of the dome because the dome otherwise is just huge. You really need to have like a dedicated area for it. And if you want to have it as just a part of some broader decorations, then I guess you kind of need to um, hide it a little or minimize it. Obviously, you can have you could have uh, converted it into procedural objects and make it smaller. But uh, yeah, the shape of that building is a bit too complicated to already you know stress the procedural object engine of the game. So I'd rather just keep it as the normal building. I'm not actually using that many procedural objects around here, to be completely honest. I'm just trying to uh, clip the buildings together and detail using that. So the only place where I'm using procedural objects are, I guess, the, the vertical surfaces. So that's all the concrete walls and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, this particular place is just going to receive like another sub-level and a whole bunch of uh, just doors, pipes and just like before. This is what I was talking about. I'm just going to detail these intersections. Yeah, th this is just amazing how you can do uh, the cracks and voids in markings with intersection marking tools. You don't have to do that somehow manually. You can just do it with, you know, changing a couple of numbers. So that's, that's really great. Then I'm going to also keep adding these uh, like uh, highlights of some areas. So for example, numbers and letters. So like I said, this place is the entrance into the entire underground of the city. So why not actually number those different uh, tunnels or bays? Because it's probably going to be very important. You know, if there's like a truck arriving, then uh, they are just going to tell it, oh yeah, go to O3A or something. And yeah, that track is just going to go exactly there to resupply uh, some kind of building further down that tunnel below the city. Now, there's this awkward place between the, the highway ring and the scar. I definitely did not want to continue the rest of the city there as if the scar didn't happen, even though that probably was the original idea now that I talk about it. But, uh, well, I just want to wrap up the city in this direction. So I decided to go for these logistics centers and that's actually once again following an, an already established trend of the city because I am putting these kinds of logistics centers on every single entrance, highway entrance to the city. So yep, it's just going to go right here. Although this is actually not going to be just the logistics center, but it's also going to be the tram depot. So I'm just going to kind of highlight it by placing, for example, these newly arrived trams uh, that are just going to be uh, boosting the transport system of us tourists. They're just arriving fresh from the factory. And I'm going to use the Asturis Transportation Authority logo right here on the building. So I'm just going to borrow it from the, from the, from the stop detail, and I'm just going to stretch it and put it on that uh, building. Um, maybe there was some kind of a sign when I was building this, because uh, just when I wanted to uh, put that logo there, stretch it, uh, the game crashed for me. So I don't know if it was, if it was a it was maybe the game trying to tell me something. Hopefully, hopefully not. Anyways, uh, this place obviously needs to be functional. So that's also where it's kind of important that I made these buildings functional or I just left them functional. I did not convert them to procedural objects. So this is actually some serious industry gameplay wise for the whole city. So all of these roads are connected to the surface level. They are connected to some strategically placed uh, tunnel entrances here and there. So for example, through that uh, logistics warehouse, you could have seen me build tunnels 
that are just connecting down into these places. And further on the city side, I did the similar thing. So that's that. Very important highlight is gonna be this uh, this module, procedural object module usage. So I'm gonna be using the effects module and I'm just going to be using all the smoke and fire. Now, actually speaking of Star Wars before, I was kind of a little bit inspired. I'm not sure if you guys uh, remember just from the top of your heads uh, that uh, chase scene on Coruscant in the, in the second episode it was kind of looking as a little similar, where you had uh, just like a huge open field with nothing but industry, and there were these pipes and chimneys just uh, with smoke and fire coming out of them. Uh, it's just a nice detail. It's actually going to be a nice detail even in the in the night because the light. Uh, well, the effects, the the, the fire effect in these cans is a little strange. You can definitely see it in the night but it's not uh, casting any light on its own. So it's a little bit strange, but it's there. Yeah, it's there and it's uh, moving, obviously. The fire is moving. So it's just like a, an animation that's happening. It's just a detail there to just make it more interesting. There it is. There is that uh, transfer between, uh, you know, back and now. And yeah, you can see that there's, it's there, right? Like I said, it's not color-wise all that massively different from the rest of the city, but you can definitely see the difference, yeah? And it's helped by the green stripe on the sides. Uh, I don't think I showed you how I put those trees there. It was not exactly important. I do it all the time, but I definitely made sure to make it very dense, those, uh, those forests around here, so that it's kind of blocking uh, some of the pollution, maybe a little, the noise and uh, the view, I guess. Even though the place is sunken, you are not exactly supposed to like notice it all that much if you are the citizen of Asturias because it's just the thing that's happening below you, you know, don't worry about it. But it's not hidden either, right? So some of the skyscrapers, uh, windows from the skyscrapers uh, can definitely see this place, which is okay, nothing wrong with that, but uh, you know, it's there, everyone knows it, but don't worry about it, all right? We are just... Uh, making sure the city is running and you don't really need to worry about a single thing. Right, so uh, these are all the finished uh, cinematics, of course. I really like how this place is busy. You can see, for example, trucks entering the 03A tunnel, which is actually the entrance back to the surface. The other entrances are on the right side down there. Yeah, you can see some trucks going down below. And otherwise, the place is very busy, even pedestrians. There are, uh, oh, there's actually a single tram stop right in the middle. There's gonna be another tram stop, like, uh, on the side, but actually, like, outside of the scar area, more towards the right from this view. I think I already placed it there. You can tiny little bit see trams stopping there. That's actually gonna be a project for the next episode. I'm gonna build, like, a, like a plaza, and I'm just going to make the places uh, to the right here, where you can see that we have empty space. I'm just gonna make those places look as if the scar wasn't there, right? So just like with the building block uh, closer to the Olympic Park, to the city. Finally, the night view. Yeah, it's looking nice. It's looking really nice. I used uh, a lot of these colored lights, but I did not really want to overdo it with colors. Definitely wanted to highlight the, the sub-levels, so with red colors, because that's not exactly around this place that much, so you're just gonna see it. The water in that pit, uh, the cooling water, I obviously had to uh, highlight that with blue, and uh, then I was just using the yellow mostly to highlight the, the tank pits, and this like, uh, not exactly white, but like purple-ish little color, I just put on the streets, on the roads. Oh yeah, and by the way, I put actually these kinds of like blue cyan lights all around the area, and those are the kinds of lights that uh, stay on during the day. Yeah, I think I showed you in the time lapse. actually, you could have seen that. So that's actually going to look very good during the day too, because, well, it's a tunnel, so it needs to be lit 
even during the day because, well, sunlight doesn't go there. Anyway, guys, if you liked today's episode, please do all the things below it, clicking, rating, subscribing. Huge thanks to the channel members who are directly supporting this channel and me in what I'm doing. I greatly appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much once again. Take care. Goodbye.